Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, <laughs> I'm making another video mid-year talking about a mid-year curriculum switch, especially when it comes to math. So you guys, we officially made the switch from Saxon Math to Math UC, and I'm going to explain all the reasons why we made our mid-year math switch. So you guys, if any of you are new here, I'm Brittany. I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls, and you guys, like, I'm a hot mess. Like, that's what I'm gonna call myself today. I feel like I'm a hot mess. I'm trying to get it all together in this homeschool. I'm still trying to figure out these things for my kiddos, and I'm still trying to pivot along my homeschooling journey with them and really make adjustments when needed. And you guys, I'm saying all that to say is that this adjustment that I made in our homeschool as far as math curriculum for my oldest daughter, I definitely feel like it was needed. And I do see a difference in our homeschool since we have switched from Saxon to Matthew C. So if any of you guys have followed along my homeschooling journey, at least for the past year, <laughs> you definitely will know math has always just been that subject in my homeschool that has been like a hard fit for my oldest daughter. Um, I do have a lot of videos, you guys, on my channel all about like my math, my math journey, my math switches. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a full playlist together for you guys of like all of our math curriculum switches, um, all the curriculums we have tried, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you like a brief overview of our like math journey. So when we've started off our homeschooling year in the third grade for my oldest daughter, Brielle, we started off using a Becca Arithmetic 3. Uh, which went well. We actually completed that book from start to finish, Abeka, in her third grade year. Fourth grade was definitely, you guys, a doozy. I feel like we were all over the place when it came to math curriculum in our fourth grade year. Our first semester alone, we tried three math curriculums, you guys. We tried Singapore Dimensions Math. Uh, then we went back to Abeka Arithmetic 4. Then we also tried the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4. And again, I do have videos all about those particular curriculums on my channel as well already. Um, from there, we made a mid-year curriculum switch in January of 2022 to Saxon Math. So we went from um, Abeka 4, Simply Good and Beautiful Math, Singapore to Saxon 6-5. And we actually completed Saxon 6-5, you guys. And, you know, I really thought that Saxon was going to be it for our homeschool. I didn't have to think about math, at least for my oldest daughter. I felt like, okay, I can tie this one up, wrap a bow on it, and, you know, we're done. We are solid in math. But, you know, um, as much as we do want to do that, sometimes I feel like we can't. Sometimes I feel like we kind of just have to take each level uh, as we go. Uh, but now that you guys can see like where we are in our math journey, we completed Saxon 6-5 uh, in what, September of 2022. And then we went straight into Saxon Math 7-6. And if you guys have seen like any of my videos on my channel, my update videos about Saxon, you definitely will know like my main concern with Saxon definitely was at this level, it was a few things, but the main thing was more so the time that it was taking for uh, Brielle to complete a full Saxon uh, math lesson, among other things. And I will kind of get into them as I go. But you guys, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Saxon if you don't know anything about it. Uh, this is Saxon. This right here is just the test and the worksheets because you guys, I actually sold my Saxon book. So I don't have like the full physical book to show you, but I'll kind of just like I'll talk you through how a full Saxon lesson would look in your homeschool. So this right here is the Saxon test and the worksheets and the um, speed drills that they have in here for the kiddos. So every morning before the kiddos start off their Saxon math, they will do like a quick Quick speed drill uh, it might be something like this where this is um, addition or they might do subtraction or they might do multiplication they might be reducing fractions they might be turning fractions from decimals into percentages vice versa uh, simplifying fractions it's a variety of activities that they will be doing when they first start off their um, lesson for that day as far as their speed drill they would then go from their speed drill to their warm-up or their mental math section and I would definitely say that mental math section really helped Brielle with her mental math just continuously practicing that skill every single day in that warm-up practice uh so she would do her um so then here is so her speed drill 
her warm up. Then after the warm up, Saxon has the lesson practice, which will go over that concept for that day that they're learning. And then after they complete the lesson practice, it also has a mixed practice component where they are going to be reviewing all of the previous concepts taught in previous lessons. So Saxon is a tried and true spiral curriculum. I feel like Saxon's approach as I have completed one level is definitely to teach the kids mathematics through repetition. Sax Saxon math, to really be honest, it doesn't go any deeper than how to solve the problem and what clues to look to solve problems. Uh, Saxon does not teach conceptual math where they're understanding the why behind the math. And for some kiddos, uh, you know, just learning how to solve the problem may be perfectly fine for them, but some kiddos, they kind of need to know, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I getting the answers that I'm getting? And um, I was finding that for Brielle, she definitely was asking, especially towards the latter end of Saxon 6-5 when we were completing it, she was definitely beginning to ask those more why questions and I was finding myself having to like stop and explain the why outside of this accent so she can really understand and hone in on that concept. Another thing too is that you guys spiral programs in general I feel like spiral programs are pretty tricky uh, just because um, you can form gaps with spiral programs if you're if you don't really pay attention to your kiddos especially the problems that they're getting wrong like if they're always getting a specific word problem wrong or they're always getting uh, their subtraction with borrowing wrong you know okay I need to go back and review this concept you kind of can't let it go under the wayside and uh, what I was finding was how Saxon breaks down their uh, lesson practice uh, where they will only go over one half of like let's just say they will only go over one part of how to multiply decimals and then they wouldn't go over part two until 15 lessons later well sometimes I was finding that Brielle would actually forget how to do part one even though she had it in her mixed practice she would forget how to solve it and uh, when it came to the part two we were reviewing the part one before we could get to the part two and it was kind of stalling our lessons especially towards the latter end of Saxon 6-5. I was finding that was happening a lot and I was kind of looking really close to the patterns of Brielle, especially when it came to math. And I was really noticing when we stopped to master that one concept, like she got it, she would feel confident and she would feel ready to go on to the next thing. And it really started to make me question like, um, should I try a mastery program with Brielle, especially as she is moving in higher levels of mathematics? And would a mastery based program suit her a lot better than this spiral program? Um, those were the questions I was beginning to ask at the end of Saxon 6-5. But you guys, nevertheless, I was very, very scared to make yet again another curriculum change at that point. I was like, you know what? We are going to complete out this year with Saxon. Like, I don't care. It's taking her too long. <laughs> at least that's what I was thinking in my head. Like, you know, I will find a way to make this work. Like, we just have to complete this level uh, because I cannot make another switch yet again. Um, and you guys, that's kind of like what we did. So we, from, what is it? So from October to December, we worked some more in Saxon. It was becoming a lot better as she was kind of getting used to it. It still was taking her a long time, you guys. Saxon was taking her about like an hour and 45 minutes. Some days, you guys, it was taking her two hours to complete math. And I felt that that was entirely too long. Now I do understand because, uh, you know, this level Saxon 7, 6, as they are getting up there in the mathematical concept, I know uh, they're doing like long division, uh, long multiplication. Everything has like two and three steps when they are solving their mathematics problems. So I know it's going to take longer, but I did not feel like an hour plus was appropriate for math um, for her in our homeschool. And I was really, really starting to be concerned about that. In a lot of my update videos, I definitely was talking to you guys about my complaint about Saxon when it came to the length of time that it was taking her to do it. It, you guys but we also are doing Nicole the math lady and I added in like the online grading so before I was just like checking her work and I know grades are like arbitrary when it comes to homeschool however in having the online grading I feel like I was able to have a, a better tack of the problems she did get wrong and kind of like to better suit her so it was such a great addition when I added it into our regular video lessons with Nicole the math lady's grading 
but I was able to get an average for Brielle's math and her average as far as like her warm-ups or her mental math was a 90% and her average for her test was a hundred percent and then her average for her mixed uh, practice was a hundred percent now that's on her second attempt uh, they also give like the first attempt try but the first attempt tries are kind of like one-off because sometimes she may forget to put like the dash or something inside the grading and it will mark it wrong uh, but in total she actually had an A in this math so I knew it was working uh, but I was just like I'm just not liking it <laughs> so Fast forward now, we are in January, we're in present. I went ahead for my middle daughter, Leia, who is a math lover. We are actually doing kindergarten math with confidence with her. I knew I wanted to add in a second math for her. And I already um, went ahead and I had Math UC ready for her for her kindergarten year, Math UC primer. And I was like, you know what? While she's doing math with confidence, let me go ahead and add in the primer. Um, I seen one of uh, my friends on YouTube, Rachel from Seven and All, she is actually doing primer and and kindergarten math with confidence with one of her sons and it's working out really really well and you guys um those curriculums they do mesh very very well together so i was excited to start off a uh, primer with her and leia loves it so you guys when brielle seen the uh primer i was doing with leia she seen the box with all the blocks and everything like that you guys these are so cool and it's so cool how uh, math you see incorporates this like hands-on learning with the blocks um Brielle came to me and you know for she came to me and what she said was mommy do they have that in my level and would it be okay if I was to try math you see and you guys like I already knew at the end of Saxon 7 6 that we were just going to be uh completed with Saxon and we was going to go ahead and make that pivot into math you see uh for her upcoming homeschooling year um so I already knew I was going to make the switch and because she asked you guys, I just said yes. Brielle, you guys, I'm really, really blessed. And I know like I brag on my daughter all the time, but I really feel blessed because you guys like Brielle kind of just goes with the punches. She doesn't ask for much in her homeschool. She does her homeschooling work and she's done with her day. Like I really don't have many like issues when it comes to her in our homeschool, like getting her work done, I should say. She gets it done and she wants to go about her business and she doesn't complain and she always has a positive attitude. And for her to come to me and ask me for something, and especially if you have a kiddo like that, like you're gonna say yes. So you guys, uh, we actually was on a test on Saxon. So we were actually like at a halfway or at a stopping point with it. So I was like, you know what? We're at a stopping point with Saxon. Uh, she completed test number eight of um, the Saxon lesson. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and try out Matthew C. So I did the placement test online for her and she kind of like fell in between both the Saxon um, Zeta, which is the decimals and I mean the Matthew C Zeta, which is the decimals and percentages and the Epsilon, which is the fractions level. She kind of fell in between both of these levels because she is coming from, again, a spiral program. So what I did was I placed her in Epsilon and you guys like she loves this curriculum. Um, math is taking Brielle right now between 45 minutes and one hour a day. Um, one thing that Brielle told me she really loves about this program is she loves how like clean the uh, math you see pages are. And um, I love how she's only doing 20 problems a day. Like it definitely has cut out the load. Um, one thing about Brielle, she told me she really likes is that she's honing in on one skill and she's truly understanding the why. Um, the video lessons, they're kind of dated. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but uh, Mr. Demi who does the lessons, they're really, really short and sweet. They're short, they're really similar to Nicole the Math Lady's like length. They're like short, sweet to the point. And I love seeing the kiddos with the fractions, how they're used like these overlays to solve the problems. Like um, it's so cool watching Brielle um, add and subtract uh, fractions with unlike denominators, how if she has one third plus one six, how she has to put the six over top of the thirds to figure out her answer. And it's so cool watching her use these overlays and learning this math like with her hands. I mean, I know that's why it's called math you see, but um, it's so cool to see her really gain a good understanding of math. She's understanding the concepts and you guys, she's happy. And you know, like I'm happy cause she's happy. And um, 
if someone was to ask me this question, like how would I choose between Matthew C and Saxon and which one would I prefer? Honestly, I pretty, I can't give you guys an answer to that because you guys, both Matthew C and Saxon, they are very solid programs. I will say this though, uh, coming from Saxon to Matthew C, I will say Saxon is more rigorous. And to really be honest, I kind of already see the path that Brielle is going in her career and in life. And I know she's probably not going to need mathematics past college algebra. And if I can find a math that she can learn, she can understand, she can be happy to do, I'm going to choose that math. And um, that's why I ultimately made this decision to go ahead and switch her to math. You see, it was really based off of preference. Um, both of these programs, you guys, at the end of the day, like I said before, they are very strong. They're tried and true. And I honestly, after doing both of them, uh, I can stand behind both of these programs and say that they are great, 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 excellent math programs. Now, as far as the speed that Brielle is going through in these uh, programs right now, in Epsilon, we are only two weeks in and she's already on lesson seven out of 30. So my goal for us is to just finish off Epsilon by the end of this semester or the end of this homeschooling year. If she finishes it earlier, as you guys already seen, I do have um, Zeta for us ready to go uh, that she can go into if we finish it before our school year is over. Um, and then if that's the case, we'll kind of just pick it up where we are going into our next homeschooling year. So um, as you guys can see, it's official. We are like a math you see family over here and it's so crazy seeing like the beginning of the program and like how they built the kids math skills it's so amazing and like I'm so in love and I think it's not the honeymoon phase love I think it's a love because I see how the concepts are building upon each other especially seeing the first level and then now seeing I think the epsilon is like the fifth level yes and then seeing the fifth level you can see how they build upon uh, in their concepts so you guys, um, this is my mid-year math curriculum switch. If you guys want me to make like an updated video talking more about math, you see as we become more comfortable with the program. If you wanna see inside of the work text of the Epsilon and the Zeta, I will make a separate video for you guys. And as always, I will update you month by month uh, how math is going for us in our household. So you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing everyone in my next one. Bye.